when the president said there, you know, we'll give some extra votes to get her over the top in case some Democrats don't elect her to be speaker. He wants, in my theory, Pelosi to be speaker because she is well known. She's also an easy villain. And when you're running in 2020, you can say Pelosi and all her obstructionists, look how bad they are. If it's a new upstart, fresh face, harder to do. Let's break down now the new Congress by demographics. First of all, a number of historic wins for women and minorities. Casey Burgett is tracking all of this. He's a senior fellow at the R Institute, R Street Institute. Uh, he, that leans libertarian. I asked for his takeaways from last night, plus what it means for Republicans to hold on to the Senate when it comes to replacing permanently Jeff Sessions. Casey, one of the big headlines out last night, I thought was for women. Uh, we have a new record. 111 at least is the last number I've read. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, I wrote this morning that the biggest winner of the night uh, was women across the board, particularly within uh, uh, Democratic offices. They, they're taking a, a record number in the House and uh, uh, an increasing number in the Senate, and that is particularly true within the Democratic Party. Uh, Republicans dropped uh, at least one member, maybe two, depending on how things solidify. Uh, and now, at least in the House, Democrats, uh, women Democrats make up about 40 percent of the caucus. So a big night for women, for sure. Joining that headline, also a great night for Native Americans, LGBT, Hispanic. But again, all kind of going on the Democratic side there when you're looking at uh, the energy and momentum. Yet I've heard many people warn against um, really embracing identity politics going into, you know, something like a 2020, where in the past we've seen identity politics backfire. Sure, it, it, it's a campaign issue for sure. Uh, and let's not forget that there is a, a few Muslim Americans being elected to, for the first time too. So uh, the, the Democratic Party particularly is, is increasingly diverse. And that does mirror their, their electorate. They are known as a big tent party as much as they can uh, drum up that, that gap between diversity uh, relative to the Republican side. Uh, it, it turns out well for them electorally. Uh, it, it is, does remain to be seen how that, that translates into policy wins and if they can um, unify the caucus. We saw a fracturing of the Republican caucus this side. On the Democratic side, we didn't have to see that because they just vote no, and it's really easy to unify behind the no vote. Now they're going to be exposed, and with an influx of new members, an influx of a high proportion of women, and an increase uh, of diversity within the caucus, you can see that there's a, a world in which that, that caucus is not as unified as we might think it might be. We have the youngest female elected to the Congress ever, uh, but also at the state level, in the state houses, which really matter, as you well know, because coming up after the next census in just a few years, they're going to redraw districts in many states, and the state houses are the ones that really matter. Right. Uh, too much attention is often focused on Congress. These state level uh, races are really, really important, too, if for no other reason that they ultimately have a huge say a lot of times in uh, drawing or deciding how the districts are drawn for those federal levels. At the at the congressional level, though, um, within the the younger the younger representatives showed out big time that was a that was a voting play that was an electoral play just on the democratic side there was a seven year drop in the average age wow. of newly uh, newly elected members on the democratic side the republicans ticked up about a year which isn't a, a huge difference we saw jeff sessions resign today now that republicans have expanded their majority will that give them a little more wiggle room in actually giving the president perhaps an ag who he wants and likes well, I think we should first start out by saying that the president asked for his resignation, which in for all intents and purposes, that is that's a firing on the cabinet level. As far as how it plays in the Senate, they it seems like they're going to have one, two, maybe three as many three new seats. I don't know how much more wiggle room that gives the president. It's a bold play doing this the minute or the day after that they, they lose the House, uh, particularly one that is uh, been vocal and committed to uh, using their subpoena and investigatory powers against scandal and the Mueller investigation and tax returns and a, a growing list of these things. Uh, we'll see how Republicans actually respond because they've they've said that they haven't needed to respond to protect Mueller uh, because they didn't think that the president had had overreached his bounds in terms of threatening that investigation. Wanted to make sure we do update and note that a number of races are still too close to call. Florida Senate race, Arizona, Mississippi, and then the face-off for governor in Georgia. Still undecided at this point amid concerns about voter suppression there. Chris Welch has the full breakdown.